Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Activities for People Living at Home with Dementia. We are proud to offer this series with funding from the Area Agency on Aging and the United Way of Tarrant County. These programs are recorded. Oh, won't this one be fun to rewatch? And they're made available <laughs> for viewing through a YouTube channel for future use. I am Martha Brown, your host for today's activities. We are presenting today, Where in the World is Heather White? And Heather, I don't know what you're presenting, so I'm just going to turn it over to you and give you the next uh, 45 minutes. Sounds good to me. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I've, good morning. I've been sharing with uh, um, a couple of friends of mine about this um, undisclosed <laughs> location I'm in, and um, I'll give you a couple of hints along the way. Uh, but I've been saying I've been saying and hearing Merry Christmas a lot. So um, there is a theme to this little event uh, that I'm at. And um, I would like to share a couple of clues with you about where I am. And then hopefully you can guess where I might be. You're doing really well about posting um, what you have to show us. That's awesome. Oh. <laughs> Good. It came up the first time. That's so. right. Yay. Yay. See, she's going to be a great facilitator. Maybe whenever I have the link saved and the actual connection part of it is smooth, I'll just be, I'll be a trainer like nobody's business. There you go. Teaching everybody how to do it. Got to figure it out myself first. So I've started a new uh, program called Where in the World is Heather? And the goal is every time I host uh, an event like this or I facilitate it, I will either be at or have recently been at a different location. And the purpose of this program is for me to share uh, clues about where I am. I'm currently on location. And the clues will be, uh, as we go, they will be more and more specific. And um, you can share stories and ask questions along the way. And bragging rights goes to the person who guesses where in the world Heather is. Oh, that, that oh, is just you competition. Are, you are the Gaylord. <laughs> you That's were supposed promise. to hear that part. I didn't know I was on <laughs> audio. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's all right. Go ahead, Heather. Go ahead, okay. Heather. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I was really in the back of my mind keeping my fingers crossed. Nobody heard you, you that. You thought since we had dementia yeah. that we'd forgotten it by now, no. right? I thought since Martha <laughs> called me on the phone, it wasn't on it for everybody to hear. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry. So, so right. act surprised at the end. Okay? Yeah, we will. We'll act surprised very okay. much. Yes. <laughs> so that's the way it should have gone, right? That's the way it should have gone in a perfect world. So um, here are a couple of photographs of the location that I'm at. And a few clues. Uh, is that I am in the United States. I'm at a family-friendly tourist attraction. The place that I'm at is a 10-acre resort. You guys, this place goes on forever. Um, it's known for, on their website, it says that they're known for their deluxe lineup of amenities. And it's close to a lake. So any, any, uh, anyone ever been to, um, since you know where it is, um, anyone ever been to this location before? Yes. No. Nope. Yeah. Yep. What, what can you tell me about, about your experiences at this location? Um, um, Myra, well, you probably remember when we went together. I, I, I remember mostly business meetings I had there. Mm -hmm. Oh, have we went to a dinner there one time, didn't we? Yeah, a mystery. One of those dinners where they had, some, they had a mystery that uh, oh. you had to uh, that they, they provided uh, uh, entertainment during a dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty good, I thought. Yeah. Oh, nice. We've been there to walk around and look at the all of the Christmas. Yeah. Uh huh. 
We went to the ice thing one year. Yeah. Um, actually, we've been to the one in Florida too, the Gaylord in Florida too. There is a chain. I didn't yeah. know that there was one. Yeah. Oh, it's Palm Beach, right? That's no, Orlando. Palm Springs. Orlando. <laughs> is it? Yeah. There's one in the Rocky Mountains I saw as well, and they are the pictures of all of them are just over the top. <laughs> now Orlando's not as big uh -huh. as the one in Florida. Okay. But it's still very elaborate, you know. Isn't there a Nashville one? I think there. I think I saw one somewhere in Tennessee. It might be Nashville. I thought that was the main place. I did. See, I did too, Dusty. Yeah. Dusty and, did what? It, he thought it was all in the same place. Is that what he did? No, no the main place. The headquarters. The headquarters. The main yes. headquarters. Place. Sorry. Which now, lake is it close to, Heather? This, I mean? uh, this location is close to Lake Grapevine. Um, it mm -hmm. sets right on the edge of Lake Grapevine. So the setup of this specific location is there is an arboretum, and I'm going to do my best. Hopefully it comes through well on the screen. I'm actually in my little hotel room at the Gaylord, and I got a room where I can walk out onto the balcony and see the atrium. You might hear Christmas music as well. Just one second. Oh yeah. It's a fountain. I, I remember they had a really, really nice sports bar there. In one of the built in one of the restaurants. And what were some things that you saw and heard? What came through well on the camera? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> and not in my end. I, just, just I heard some, What's that? Don was on the whole time. You were on the balcony. What was on the whole time? Don. Oh, Don was on the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my bad <laughs> let me try let me try it again just one second and we'll see if we can we'll see if we can make it work so there's a fountain and a christmas tree and all around are restaurants and activities various venues and hotel rooms. And it's a, it's also um, set up for, I think they said they have 88 different meeting spaces for different conferences and- Whoa, mm -hmm. that's a lot. And in a separate location from this main um, open area, this arboretum type um, our area is a, uh, a place called the glass cactus and it's, a um, it's a nightclub, but they also do different shows. And I have a couple of clips of, um, an event that I went to yesterday and took some videos there at the glass cactus. But it sets, it's a 10 acre resort right on the edge of Lake Grapevine. Uh, actually, they have one in Dallas, Orlando, Nashville, Denver, and Washington, D.C. Yeah. Part of the Marriott <laughs> hotels. It is. Yeah. It is. Um, yesterday, when we were checking in, um, I. Uh, we, we stood in line for about 40 minutes just to check into the hotel and there were parents and grandparents and extended families with bukus of children in tow and bags upon bags upon bags and everyone was anxious and excited and parents were trying to corral children and corral the bags and um, kids wanted to run everywhere and it smelled like it smelled like popcorn and 
candy and you hear this huge water fountain in the background and you can smell the chlorine in it and Christmas music echoing through the whole place. And they hand you a map and it's, there's so much to it, they have to draw out instruction instructions for you just to get to the elevator. Um, <laughs> and I went downstairs to get coffee this morning. And the line for the coffee was out the coffee shop and down the hallway. And so I said, I'll drink coffee in my room. No problem. <laughs> wow. And, so whenever I got, I stopped and purchased a bottle of water and I asked the lady behind the counter how she's doing. And she said, well, we're surviving. She said every year for Christmas, we have um, almost as many visitors in the two weeks, a week leading up to Christmas and the week after Christmas. They have almost as many visitors in that window as they do all year long. Wow. wow. Um, and oh my, they have um, all 1500 rooms completely booked. Wow, 1511. 1511. Whoa, mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, here is another picture of the main open area, and every, every venue that's under this roof, every venue that's under this roof. Um, has a hallway that juts off of this main uh, communal area. So a few more specific clues about where I'm at in, in case you want to act surprised at the end. 1,500 <laughs> hotel rooms, more than 400,000 square feet of meeting spaces. It's 30 minutes from DFW airport and they have a shuttle. So people from all over the world will fly in to DFW airport and hop on the shuttle and come to the Gaylord. And um, the Gaylord is actually, it's in Grapevine and Grapevine is not only known for its wine, it's also known as being the Christmas capital of Texas. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard the phrase, the Christmas capital of Texas? No. no. Yes, not, not long ago they mentioned it, I think on TV. They were mm -hmm. showing something about grape wine. Ooh. Have they you also, ever traveled to grape wine? also have the train that does a Christmas special, too. Mm -hmm. oh, the yeah. train line in grape oh. wine. The tarantula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it goes, there's a Christmas special. Yeah, the, the, like the Polar the, Express. Polar Express, yeah. So, Heather, after today, you can do the Polar Express and tell us about it. I can. Yeah. I sure can. I've, I've been on it. Mark, have you ever been on it? I've been on a couple times and it's uh, it's it's uh, you, you need to have somebody to talk to because it's not a quick it's, it's not a quick journey. Oh you yeah. Know? It goes from uh, from Grapevine down to Cowtown in Fort Worth mm -hmm. and uh, it it takes a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It Heather, used to but anyway. Heather I think it still one. does. Uh, it's not a quick trip. It's a couple yeah. hour trip I think. Yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. And that's and just getting down as, there. It's known as the tarantula train, right? Is that still what it's called? The Polar I think that's what it's called every, every time of the year except Christmas. And I think Marcia is called the Polar Express. Where they have, have it set up like the Polar Express. Ooh. So the tarantula train, my grandfather used to be the conductor of the tarantula oh, train. Oh, wow. it was still functioning. Um, you know the fat stock show and rodeo but it it was um it was still a um it was still a place to go and buy and sell cattle yeah and mm, cool. um so he was it was many many moons ago but he used to run the tarantula train i didn't know it was still called the tarantula train though that's there I you thought, go does I anybody that know old how old it got its name hey gail hello hey, gail. Hi. how did it get its name gail I don't know. I'm asking the group. <laughs> oh, I thought you had a clue like Heather. <laughs> Heather, I'm just glad that you 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 identified the the stock show as the the the, the fat the fat stock show uh, because <laughs> they don't use that name anymore. So yeah. it, 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 they didn't. We got down here in 1979, and they used that for up some sometime in the mid 80s. 
then they change it to something to sound healthier. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I always assumed it was referred to as the fat stock show because people would fatten up their their livestock. Yes, that's to be exactly sold. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, and I I heard too that there was a when the cattle would be offloaded to be sold, they would walk directly up onto a scale, and then an, an announcer would identify the weight and then auction the. Is that mm -hmm. how it works? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been to the auction uh, once yeah. or twice just to see it. Nice. Heather, you mentioned chlorine. Is the pool area working at this time of year? So I believe it's the fountain in the center. And then there's also a lazy river that roams, it meanders through that common area space. And it's a multi-level space and so most of the activity is on the upper floor but then you can look down and see people kind of moseying around oh. and uh yesterday um we uh had dinner next to a couple kind of chatting with them and the wife said that she had been here before with her daughter and they participated in a triathlon and it was a very um, it was a no competition triathlon, which I've never heard of such a thing, <laughs> but she said that they had people come in to compete and they had, uh, their bicycles and they would ride in a certain track around the parking lot and they would run and they ran in a certain track around the parking lot. And then they would hustle inside real quick and swim <laughs> through the lazy river. Uh -oh. And cool. I don't know, yeah. I don't know if they got a medal or what the, what the outcome was, but I could only imagine how fun that would be and people slipping and sliding, you know, running inside to jump in the river and run yeah. back out and get on the bicycle and yes. Don, you were nodding as if you, as if you're familiar, you, well, you, that, you just described a triathlon in general. So okay. have you so, competed in a triathlon? Oh, heavens no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. That was a good answer, Don. <laughs> <laughs> us is eating three different courses a meal, right? That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. I have an answer. Okay. How For the tarantula train. Gail. Okay. So what I found is that it's named that for the spider-like appearance <laughs> of the train routes in fort worth oh okay yeah. oh, that makes sense that makes sense yeah there you go rumor has it that the word tarantula was scary to children so they changed the name of the steam steam engine to puffy puffy yeah, <laughs> yeah. Puffy, puffy. that's funny well good job bring it oh, in yeah, thank you gail now that was the surprise of the day since everyone knows where i am yeah, so, but I've always wondered why it was called that, but I never took the time to look it up. There you go. So, and I learned something we, new today. When we went there to do the ice thing, you know, of course, they, you go in and they give you these big parkas to wear. I had a Santa hat on, mm -hmm. and we were in there, and a the little boy saw me in his, he was in his mother's arms, and he reached out and grabbed me, you know, because he wanted <laughs> to be held by Santa Claus. <laughs> And so we got pictures of that. And then as I was walking out, everybody was saying, oh, such a good job. I'm glad you came, Santa. Santa thing, you know, type of thing. You know. Oh, <laughs> sweet. You just ran with it. I just ran with it. Yep. You want to yeah. give your your jolly ho, ho, ho impression for everybody ho, to hear? Ho, ho, Merry <laughs> Christmas. Oh, man. You can tell he's a pro. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> So um, a little bit about Grapevine being known as the Christmas capital of Texas. There are a number of different things that the city of Grapevine um, intentionally um, brings in or overdoes uh, around uh, the Christmas season. You guys hit the nail on the head with the um, North Pole Express. Apparently that's the official term for it. Um, they set up a Christmas village um, around town. So as you're driving to the Gaylord, you'll see um, 
little offshoots of a bundle of Christmas ornaments or Santa Claus waving at passersby. Um, they have uh, everything is lit up with red and green and gold lights. And um, so they have a number of different events around town, different um, organizations will host Christmas themed events. And then some um, like not-for-profit organizations will have fundraisers and things like that. And um, just there's a main street in Grapevine, not not too far from the Gaylord, that is a um, kind of a nostalgic feel. And um, that's usually where the bulk of the um, Christmas themed events are hosted. They have different hotels that run specials to accommodate all of the visitors coming in uh, for um, this season. And they actually have a number of stores that sell Christmas themed items all year long. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Great Wolf Lodge um, redoes their whole indoor, um, uh, it's like an a indoor swimming pool recreation center, um, and it's open year-round, so you'll see people in the middle of February packing their swimsuit to, to go swim at the Great Wolf Lodge, but they redo everything and have snow falling um, every, I think it's 15 minutes inside the inside um, the Great Wolf Lodge. They have a local uh, theater um, that does special um, Christmas dinners. They have Christmas themed wine trains. And um, there is a place called Nash Farms, just, um, just right outside the doors of the Gaylord that um, they do, uh, they sell Christmas trees and they do hay rides um, and they have Christmas lights around all the trees um, all throughout the farm and um, holiday decorating contests. So um, parts of the Christmas themed decorations up and down Main Street is different organizations who bring in supplies and they will have a Christmas themed display with their organization name placard on it. Um, and then, of course, bukus and bukus of shopping. So it brings in thousands and thousands of people every year, specifically <clears throat> around Christmas. The whole town is Christmas themed. Hmm. I'm sure. I'm sure. Grapevine is not the only place that does that. Are you familiar with any other place that really does it over the top around Christmas? No. no. Aren't there some places in the Northeast that do that? Mm, places uh, that get a lot of snowfall yeah i don't know well i've been to know. the the palace theater when they did it's a wonderful life oh i've never been inside is it it's the um it's a it's an older old theater. it's an older theater yeah the did singers yeah texas tree yeah Meyer and i was went there to see uh, we saw uh the texas trio which is but three tenors that were singing. It was much better than I thought it would be. Yeah, it was a Christmas program. It was, it was a there. Christmas program, yeah. Nice. All right, we can keep on going because yes. there <coughs> is a, a list of things that are Christmas themed to do at the Gaylord. And I was impressed whenever I saw this, this list. Um, we actually went to two of the events, but I had to narrow down the things to put on this list um, <laughs> just to fit it on the screen. There's so <laughs> many activities. Um, so who was it that mentioned going to the ice exhibit, Steve? Steve. Steve. Um, do you remember the theme? I think it changes every year. Yeah, it, it mm -hmm. does. It's Snoopy. Oh, I think I went to that one. That's not this year. This is themed uh, after the movie Elf. Oh, so, um, yeah. And uh, so they have that. They have a uh, a place um, next to it that is for snow tubing. So they have um, somehow they create snow. I don't want to know what they created out of. <laughs> <laughs> and kids will get on an inner tube and you know 
you wait in line for about 30 minutes just to take, oh. you know, 14 seconds sliding down and mom, right. can I go again? Oh. And, well, it's the same way in the, in the ice area, the slides too. It's the same way you wait and wait, 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 mine, and you go down. Yeah. Yeah, fast. And then, and you hope someone is at the bottom with a really good camera to take some good yeah. pictures. Yeah. And, it, yeah. Yeah. and it's over. Um, they have a couple of different uh, areas in this main part of the building I just showed you where uh, children can have um, balloons made. I saw one being made yesterday um, and uh, it looked like um, baby Jesus laying in a manger. Uh, and they had, oh. um, they had another one that looked like reindeer. Um, so very talented balloon artists. Um, there is a group that is set aside for painting, another group that's set aside for children to sit down and decorate gingerbread houses. Um, they have another section too, where people can come and go ice skating. I'm not gutsy enough for that one. There is a Santa's snow throw. Um, so children, instead of having a pillow fight, they can have an indoor snowball fight. Um, they have a special breakfast that Charlie Brown hosts. And so children can come and have brunch with Charlie Brown. They have a scavenger hunt, build a bear. They have a carousel, photos with Santa, not Steve, but the real Santa. Oh, hey, 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 hey. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Actually, I was waiting for a, a little girl who was sitting in Santa's lap yesterday. I was waiting for her to reach up and tug on Santa's beard. I just wanted her to do it so bad, but she didn't do it. That's <laughs> why I have a real beard. Okay. <laughs> and you go, oh. Ow! I have a four month old grandson and he was two, two weeks old and he started tugging on my beard. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Precious, really? precious. Mm -hmm. So what is Mary and Light? Mary and Light is an event that um, we went to yesterday and it's the description of it is that it is an immersive light show. So they have different um, exhibits of Christmas lights made out of um, all kinds of material, broken glass and um, the like different um streamers and uh, aluminum frames to make different designs. Some you can walk through, some you have to, um, you can just pose next to. Um, some play music, some are set to music. So they're, you know, blinking and flashing and it's really kind of, kind of neat, um, but it's all outdoors. Um, and you, there's a path you follow and um, you walk through, it's almost like driving down the road and looking at Christmas lights, but you're on foot and it's kind of neat. Is that where the snow globe is? Uh, there is a snow globe there. Is it one where people can get inside? Uh -huh, and you walk through okay, it. Because I've seen some pictures of that. I thought that was kind of cool. <clears throat> yeah. It's like well, a life-size snow globe and people can get in there and get their pictures taken. That's neat. The snow globe. Mm -hmm. I think, <laughs> so there's one like that actually, that is the snow globe is in one of the hallways um, in the main hotel area. Um, the one I was thinking of in the Marion Light exhibit is a Christmas ornament. Mm. Yeah. Um, so we can keep on strolling. So their theme this year is, and this is for all of their locations, is so much Christmas. But the two events that I went to yesterday, and I'll show you a couple of clips, um, is Cirque Winter Wonderland. Oh, my. And it, the description of it was that it was, um, what I understood from it is it was similar to a Cirque du Soleil type of event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, multiple performers and um, it was, so I have a video I'll show you from, from that as well. I get dizzy every time I watch it. So I had to share it with everyone else. <laughs> see if I'm the only one. Um, and then of course we went to the Mary and Light exhibit. And so I have a couple of photos from that too, that I'll share with you. Um, 
Is anyone familiar with the Cirque du Soleil type of event? Yeah, yeah. We mm -hmm. went to it when we were in Orlando. Of course, Cirque du Soleil has a big um, setup in Orlando. Mm -hmm. Permanent? They, permanent per setup, yes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but they did a setup in the, in the Gaylord also. Oh, that's kind of neat. Yeah. But it wasn't, it, since it was Orlando, is more of a, um, wasn't so much Christmas. It was more like a sea event, you know, like with mermaids and things like that in it. Oh. It's kind of very different. So. Oh, that would make sense, being so close yeah. to the ocean, kind of a sea themed. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of neat. So... Um, I, I found an article that the Dallas Morning News wrote up on the Gaylord, and I thought it was, it did a, a great job of um, summarizing all that there is here. Um, the Gaylord Texan overlooking Lake Grapevine is home to over 1,500 guest rooms and over 400,000 square feet of meeting space. Under majestic climate-controlled glass atriums, you'll find distinctive shopping, dining and recreation all under one roof. Within acres of indoor gardens and winding waterways, you'll discover fine dining and casual restaurants, unique shopping, an award-winning day spa, which I have yet to try out, mm -hmm. and fitness center and the energetic glass cactus nightclub, <coughs> of which the nightclub is not open because it's now home to the Cirque Winter Wonderland event. Oh, right. So, but I do have a couple of photos or um, video as well. Just one second. Let's see if I can pull that up. Actually, here is one of the, just a couple of examples Ooh, of uh, how elaborate like their decorations are. He's probably six feet tall. I should have stood next to him to get an idea of how, how tall they were, but I'm not even five foot, so it wouldn't be a good, <laughs> good measurement. It's more than six foot. I bet it is, too. Because the light fixtures are usually more than six foot. Yeah. yeah. So it's so probably about on. seven, seven and a half feet, something yeah. like that. My goodness. Um, here's an example of one of the lights from the Marion Light event as well. Um, and some of them moved. It was the, the arm kind of like, um, oh gosh, big text. Big text. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Howdy folks. Howdy folks. <laughs> um, and here is, let me see if I can get the video to show. Um, it was kind of a doozy. Mm. Oh, here actually, here's one um, of the, one of the events, the light show events that you can walk through. Um, oh, it's like a long tunnel. <clears throat> and I'm trying to see how I can show this video. Is it hard for you to believe that all this is under one roof? Mm hmm mm. You can get lost without a doubt. It's easy to do. Can you see the screen? Uh, it's kind of a purple. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, I don't know about. Let me kind of turn this down a little bit. Let me play it. And um, this is a clip from the Cirque Winter Wonderland. It's about a minute long. We don't hear anything. Mm. Maybe you turned it down too far. Maybe I did. Here's the sound. Barely. <laughs> a little bit. There we go. There, there you go. Yay. <laughs> Can't be easy. 
No. Mm. If it was, we'd all be doing it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they have to have good insurance, I would assume. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yay! And the uh, bear was, um, have you seen a, have you seen the costumes um, where they have a fan installed in them and the fan is blowing air and it keeps them puffed up? Yeah. yeah. So this bear was like that um, and it had hair that was soft enough. The hair would kind of move too as the bear would walk. (laughs) And there was a screen in the front of it and you can see this lady, I would assume she's kind of petite lady in this big old bear. And when the bear would kind of do its head, she would reach her hands up and she would make it, you know, make it move, you know, Mm -hmm. it was this neat, neat little, neat little event. Um, And there is another video I would love to show you if I can get it to come up. Oh, this is, I think this was the last one actually. In case you didn't see the room, the view from the room very well, this is from our balcony. Yeah. Um, looking wow. down. Yeah. It's a magnificent, magnificent place. So if you have an opportunity to go um, or um, if you um, have any opportunities to like look at pictures or get see clips of different events that they host year round. I highly recommend it. That's it, my friends. Yay, Heather. Oh, thank you very much. Excellent. Yeah. Heather, you. that was wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next time, don't tell Martha where you are in front of us. I know. I didn't know I was in front of you. She didn't know she was on speakerphone. <laughs> That's so all right. You, That's so all right. Spoil the surprise before you revealed all the places. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's all right. We got a bumpy start, Gail. That's all. Well, we were surprised at the end. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were so surprised. Yes. Heather, do you yes, plan ma'am. to do this once a week out of your out of your five days for your afternoon program? Is this going to yes, be ma'am. a? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So they won't all be quite as um, elaborate. The goal is to have a um, a different event set up um, or a different location set up every week, but it might be um, a historic location um, or it might be um, focusing on a, uh, a store or an organization that, that does something, you know, special or unique. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the video I was going to show you um, before we all depart that um, every time I watch it, it makes me dizzy. Um, is um, it's another clip from the Cirque Winter Wonderland event. Um, I want to, can you see my screen? Yes. Uh So we, um, I don't know how I managed it, but uh, we were sitting on the front row and there was a hoop uh, that would, it was on a string and it would be brought down from the ceiling and some of the performers would grab onto that hoop and, um, the, the, um, it would be lifted up in the air. So they would be lifted up in the air, um, and they would do tricks and spin and hang from it and very elaborate, you know, performances. And, um, there was a gentleman who was performing and, I was wondering what he was doing when he first got started, but he grabbed a hold of that hoop and he, he leaned back and he took off running and he jumped holding on to this hoop and swung out over the crowd. And when he came back, he started kind of doing a spin. And I assume that there is a trick to it so that you don't get dizzy. Um, because I would absolutely get dizzy and not be able to stand up, but he did a phenomenal job. There's no audio on this one, but I do want to play it for you so you can see that piece of it as well. There you go. Okay. 
Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'd be falling down. Oh, you better mm -hmm. believe it. He slings his body around and spins and spins. I see what you mean about getting nauseated just watching it. It's wild, I know. And then look, he stands up, no problem. He's not swaying from side to side. I wonder what the trick is. Huh. That's why I'm question. not a circus performer. <laughs> oh yeah, I could never do that. <laughs> you do better as Santa Claus, Steve. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> the question yeah. would be how many people got sick after they sat right there and watched that? <laughs> no. Who was it that who was it that used to um, have um, you would bust watermelons on the stage? Oh and yeah, um, go everywhere. Yes, me. Gallagher. 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 That's yeah. right. Maybe it's like Gallagher show or Sea World with Shamu, and you you know sit on the front row at your own risk. I I got wet from Shamu once. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, Heather, this has been most enlightening. I can't yes. wait for Thank your you. programs to start later in January. Heather, do you have a timetable for what time of day this is going to be yet? Or is it to be decided? Is it official, Gail, the 1130? Yes. Yay. So 1130. Go ahead. This is so all you, we, girl. We are launching two brand new programs beginning January the 17th, which is a Monday. And Heather will be the main leader for the Let's Get Together, a social club for seniors that will be from 1130 to 1215. And Where in the World is Heather will be a featured component of that program. And people will find that program through referrals from Texas Health Resources and other healthcare and um, services and organizations that offer services to senior adults. And uh, participants in those programs will complete a pre-attendance uh, questionnaire um, about isolation so that we can track <laughs> what kind of changes we see in the levels of isolation and depression as they participate in those activities. And then additionally, activities for people living with dementia will also be offered in the afternoon. And I think that we have decided on 1.30 to two o'clock in the afternoon at least I think that's what we're going to test. And we haven't finalized the schedule, but Martha and Heather will be working together to um, offer that second time slot. So, so we'll still have the morning time still slot. Still have the morning. Okay. I'm not going yeah. anywhere. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted but to make sure. Thank yeah. you for still asking. offering the morning. This will be a second yeah. option so that if you have a doctor's appointment that interferes with your attendance or um, for someone who mornings aren't their best time of day, or it might also give an opportunity for Paulette to join us from California. Wouldn't that because be it's in the afternoon and since there's a two hour time difference for her, that mm -hmm. would make um, a better time slot <coughs> for her. Is it still but, gonna be the same link as the morning? Yes. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure that you no. Know, yes. I'm that raising. way, if you want to go to the activities program, it's always the same link and there's no confusion. Heather's new program, the Let's Get Together a Social Club, will be on a different one. Okay. And it will be Zoom Room Five. So instead of a six on the end, it will have a five on the end. Okay. Well, that's the one that uh, you 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 uh, fill out a. a, a, a do a questionnaire for right and we okay. we may start doing the questionnaire for the afternoon time slot as well because we're looking to track some data because that helps us with funding mm 
Mm -hmm. Funders want to know what kind of um, data is available about the benefits of the program. And so as we move forward in offering additional programs, we will be doing some things like that to gather data to show that um, we're, we're making a difference. Are, are so. you gonna send us the link for the questionnaire for Heather's? Uh, yes, I will. Okay, okay. okay. thank you. So, um, and as is always, um, anytime you have a testimonial, you get some uh, positive feedback from one of your physicians um, related to the fact that you've been um, active and socially engaged on a regular basis. And that translates into, you know, they don't see any decline or they see improvement. We would love to hear about those things because that helps us substantiate the need for the programs that we offer. Okay, very good. So, Thank you, Gail. So and thank you, Heather. Yay, thank, thank you, Heather. Thank, you. thank you, Martha. Thank you all for acting surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 2022 is going to be a big, busy year for us. Yes, okay. it will. So, um, yeah, lots, it. lots of things happening, and I could not do it without all of you, first of all, mm -hmm. and the help of Martha and now Heather, who's coming on with us as a volunteer to start out. Yay. So we're going to do you. some arm twisting to change that, though, I think. Yes, <laughs> let's do that. Let's do that. I, I, I don't even want to close this, this series because we've had such a good time today. But, you know, we do have things we've got to get done. So <laughs> let me share my screen with you. I, I want to tell you about the rest of the week. Where in the world is Heather is today. Tomorrow is Peggy Spear. And we can't decide if she's going to do deer or trees or bears or tigers or lions or. <laughs> what did she do last week? Slaves. 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 Okay. I think what happened, if I understand it, and I wasn't there all the time, is. She had deer slated for the week. She did trees and everybody wanted trees. So she did trees, oh. but I don't know if she's done deer yet. So I don't think watch. she's done deer. I don't no, think, I don't she think she's done deer either. So, so we're so, just, it's going to be a surprise. It will be a surprise. That was hey, Steve's yeah. point yesterday. Okay. Then Thursday, we have Emily Corbin bringing us moving to heal. And Friday, <coughs> instead of music, we have Jeopardy. Hey. Hey. The Jeopardy and game is in the pocket, and I am all ready for that. So come and right. have a good time. And is it Christmas themed? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That would make it too easy, Gail. That's a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't find enough Christmas stuff. Uh, you could say it's something from around the world, and I'll just leave it at that. Okay. okay. Gaylord. What is the Gaylord for 500? <laughs> where is the Gaylord? Now, where is the Gaylord, is the Gaylord for 500? Now? That would be a good quiz after today's session. A Jeopardy <laughs> about all things Gaylord. It would. Yeah. <laughs> How many lights do they have? How many yeah. rooms do they have? How many acres? 1,411 rooms. Very good. <laughs> Heather, you can maybe work on that as, as a follow-up day to your Where is Heather day. Yes. A pop quiz. <laughs> pop quiz, that's right. Anybody have anything they want to share before we sign off for the day? No. Nope. Nope, we're good. We're good. I have enjoyed we're this good. so much. Heather, thank, thank you for being thank here. Thank you so much. Good, good right. to see you, Gail. Right. Merry Christmas, everybody. Everybody, everybody. Have a good day. Bye.